We just entered. We gave them tickets. So just note that there's special exhibitions where you need a time slot ticket so that they control the crowd. And in this one, it's, it's a submarine entry ticket and you choose the time slot that you're gonna go in. So you have to make sure you choose the time slot, space it out a little bit, and enjoy the time that you have. It's pretty good because then it's not too crowded. There's a little model there of the actual submarine we're gonna go inside. Yeah, guys, the propeller is right, just saying. Yeah, it's not, it's not solid like that. Actually, it's pretty accurate, man. It just wasn't golden. Maybe it was golden originally. Probably. She can't be a Okay, let's see what this thing's about. Okay, we go outside. Yes, I like outside right now. I like outside because I'm sweating. Yesterday we were cold, today we're sweating. I could have told you not wore the winter jacket today. Argonaut. 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 Okay, read it. Guys, All right, you ready? Guys, wait! Ella, here, come here, I'll read for you guys. The Argonaut was built in the Chenberg Naval Base in 1953, that's a long time ago, and it entered activity service in October 1958. In the midst of the Cold War, and by the way, the Cold War means that they weren't actually fighting with guns, they were more fighting with each other politically, as in with feelings. The Soviet fleet consisted mainly of submarines. To track them discreetly, the West needed to design a small, maneuverable, and quiet submarine. In order to avoid detection, all of the engines on board the Argonaut were mounted on elastic suspensions so as not to transmit vibrations to the hull. The Argonaut was also the subject of other innovations, in particular for its diesel engines which are now used only to recharge batteries, which means it's now battery powered. Having sailed for 25 years mainly in the Mediterranean, without engaging in any combat, the Argonaut made it to its last voyage from Toulon via La Harvey Harbor to Paris, where it welcomed its first visitors in December 1990. It is this pioneering role and its presence in the capital that earned the Argonaut the status of historic of historical monument in 2019. Okay. So you want to know how accurate I am? It's right here. That's pretty accurate. Um, yes, accurate enough. Like a shark. So let's check this out. So this was put on display in 2000. Oh, it's right above us. I didn't even see that. It's it's right here. Uh, you didn't, you didn't see the whole time? I didn't realize I was standing underneath it. There it is. How come, what would have happened if it fell? Right now. Oh, I'd be dead. Oh, well, I'd probably run fast enough. I don't know about you. Well, I'd run fast enough because it just rolled and then I'd be fine, but like. Going up. So here's the side of the submarine just to show you guys what's up and what's happening. It's being propped up with these Dude, pillars. What's that? It's uh, moss. Okay, so here's the door. We're gonna hop in, and there's lighting, so we're good to go. Dude, this is the bunker area. Um, actually, the bunker area where the, oh, this is like an RV. Okay, so look at that, guys. You got beds here. I can totally sleep in this. People that sleep that work in submarines, they say that uh, it feels like you're sleeping in a coffin. Well, look at the pet space. Here. One guy apparently woke up once and thought, and for a split second, he said. He thought he was in a coffin and someone killed him. Wow, look down guys, look down, look down. You got a propeller shaft right here, propeller shaft. Whoa. Right. I guess they do it like that in case something busts. Yeah. And then they need to stick their hand in and stuff. Wow, and you got pressure gauges, you got light bulbs. And up here we have some sort of sensors. All the way to the top there's piping. And over here, there's a PSI gauge, I assume. Oh no, this is a meter gauge to see how long, how far you've gone. Cool. But I'm gonna get you guys a closer view of this bed, okay? Let's poke my head in there. Let's see what I can show you. Wow. I can totally sleep in this place. Oh. 
the bed's right here. It's even closer. So let me just poke my head in there and show you guys how the bed looks. Like Ella's climbing to the top. Are you supposed to? Don't, don't. You're not allowed to. It says that. Probably. It no, says. I think you could. Go up. See what happens. You can peek no. up there. But you no, can't. it's don't. closed. Oh, it's closed. Oh. No, that would be like really wet. No, I mean maybe there's like. I'm not actually gonna go. It's supposed to be closed. Otherwise, you would die underwater. It's supposed to have like a, a glass top. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. It's like twisty. Oh, is you it? Twist it so then. Yeah, we're not you don't gonna like die. This is not a camera. Okay, guys, can you get me go first? Can you guys let me in, please? Nope, I'm not. I don't want to go in there. Let me in quick. In case. Okay. Look how narrow this space is. It's so narrow. He's not going? He doesn't want to go in there. Okay, I, you guys really got to let me in because I can't see anything. Oh, wow. This is cool. I'm going to show you guys this part here. This is uh, some sort of gear mechanism. Wow. This is like a picture of how they were. I guess you don't, I guess you don't wear shirts because it's hot. Some marines are apparently very hot. Look at that. Wow. Well, that's why they're not Well, I guess there's no air. There's no air, it's hot. It's very hot in some marines. And there you go, wow. Yeah, guys, in the Yeah. Well, look, there's like 100 gauges in the room. Oh. You have to watch your head. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's check out what this is. I don't know what this is. But let's check it out. I might research later. Is there some sort of compartment? Did you check the dials off in the back there? Yeah, so we look at this. It's a regulation. Come back in because it's over there we will be stuck in. Look, yes, he's totally in his underwear. <laughs> okay, so over here we got some more valves, more pressure gauges, and uh, we got some switches here. Looking down, we have that. There's a switch here. And if you go here, there is something down there. Another another vent of some sort down there. You can probably sleep someone there. So these are, I don't know what these are. I'm not a submarine expert, guys, but I want to show you how it looks to be in here. I'm doing my best here. Oh, look at that, a bunch of valves. And a couple of things to open and turn up here. Interesting. This is very scary. It is. I would hate to be in here all day. And that's definitely a PSI gauge because there's bars. There's a lot of these uh, wheels to turn. I don't know what they're for. Got a red light. Ugh, port exhaust. Okay, here we go. So we got a bunch of these. These are exhaust valves. Okay, so you would turn these to do exhaust, to exhaust your valves, but I don't know what will be in there. Pressure. Pressure from the engine, from the inside hull. I'm not exactly sure. But or in just here... To or the pressure from being so low in the ground. Yeah, so I can't really see in, in the there ocean. too much, but there's a bunch of other things in there. On this side, there's also a bunch of other things. That is the pile stick. I'll research what that is later. But yeah, if you look at here, there's a valve you can pull. There's more valves you can open. You're cool. lucky spot. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Check this out. There's a step on the bottom. So you don't get out as you fall. I think this is like another section of the living quarters because here you start seeing like living area. Mm -hmm. There's the dishwashing soap area. Oh, there's a kitchen here. Yeah. I guess water is unlimited. Oh, look, there's air conditioning. Air conditioning. Hey, I guess you need that. Otherwise, you'd be too hot. Yeah. But I assume even with air conditioning, it's hot. There's a toilet, but I don't see a shower. I was looking for a shower and I don't see a shower. Oh, this is a toilet. My God. An maybe, actual legit toilet. Maybe they just swim in the ocean for a shower because there's no shower there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is legit interesting. This is, next part's cool. Okay, let's go. Okay. There's Whoa. more sleeping. Hey, is that a fridge? 
Is that a fridge or what? Um, I think so, like where food storage is. So it would store food. I wonder how much, how long this would last you. It's probably, like, it's not really, like, maybe they changed the glass, but it's not really sealed. I mean, if it's hot in here, wouldn't it just go bad? Well, all these are preserved food. I guess the bread. Well, there's a lot of canned food, right? So I guess that's what they mainly eat. Well, there's apples and stuff. And okay, what's on this side? More beds. I think More this beds. is where they eat because this is a dining table. Ah, this is a table. I guess it converts because it flips upwards. Yeah, that makes sense. And there's but it's cool because they always need an area to walk, but it's like kind of like a one-person walkway. Mm -hmm. And down here is some other stuff. It's like the engine and all that stuff down here. I wonder what that is. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely an engine. I see some valves and spark plugs. I wonder if they changed it to glass or it was like this so that the crew can see that. I think it's like this. Oh, look, there's a picture of a person right there. Mm-hmm. You see it? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. how he would go down there, I guess, and be in the engine. Mm-hmm. Maintain it. Hey, here's a sink. Where? Shower here. Oh, okay. Right there. Shower here? No, there's no drain. No, but you could wipe yourself. I guess so. Uh, okay, cool. This is, oh, here it is. Petty officers' quarters. So this is the lower rank officers. Okay. Oh my God, so tight, I can barely fit through. Okay, I got through. Look at here. Got a bunch of temperature valves. A lot of on and off valves for something. And look in the top. More valves. <laughs> There's a lot of valves in this thing. So that's a purge valve. The purge air, purge, I don't know what. It's the pressure in the ocean. Oh, okay. Pressure, pressure in the ocean, okay. Hey, look, R2-D2. No, just kidding. This is a compass gyroscopic. Oh, comp gyro compass. Oh, so R2-D2 was designed after a compass. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, there's something today. Look at that place. Gas dosing unit. CO2, I see. And more valves. This is some cool stuff, man. Look at that. All right. And as I turn around and keep going, I see a ladder, which leads you somewhere. That's bridge access to the trunk hatch, which is currently closed. And the rest, I don't know what it is. There's this big giant metal canister to my right. And I don't know what that is either. But it's metallic. One more shot is this right here. These guys are totally showing how they used to look here in a live environment. Their head's not that sweaty, so I'm guessing that was a cold day. And here are some more valves and some gauges for you to look at. There are some diving panels. Whoa. And forward hydroplane control. Interesting. So yeah, I got a bunch of these pressure gauges. I don't know what they're for. Wood plate in front. Ah, uh, UHF, so radial stuff is here. Oh yeah, these are temperature gauge, pressure gauge, frequency for radio. And that's, I don't know. But yeah, I wanna show you the top, Ashley. Just to give you an idea, see the top? It's like a bunch of wires that are all bundled up. So people have thought about this very well. What's there? Oh, hang on, hang on, I got another piece here. Okay, so this is where everything connects. You see a guy there, he is doing something, but he would sit here, I guess, and control this. Oh, this is a rudder control. So he controls the rudder in this little tiny spot, which has a chair there. Cool. Now, Central Operations Combat Information Center. Yeah. Not yeah. What? It's not yeah. I'm talking to the guy that owns the Combat Fighting Channel. <laughs> so yeah. You got these turning knobs, which I won't touch. Oh yeah. A step. Okay. What's this? Over there. A search periscope. Hey. That is a radar transmitter. Oh my God! Look at that. That's huge. This is a lot of stuff to deal with here. 
So analog. So much equipment. Wow. It's amazing though. It really is. So going back up. Over there, right there, you, you, there's what? a sign there. Okay. That is the bearing graph. And over here is torpedo computer. It's a computer, an old school computer. Wow. Amazing. It's a torpedo computer. Whoa. And uh, what's this? Hey! Sound. Sonar. It says sonder, but I'm sure that's French for sonar because that looks like a sonar yeah. graph to me. I couldn't see the words because there's like glue in here. Uh huh. Echo sounder. Yeah. This is the echo sounder, so maybe it says echo for the sonar to detect. Radar detector. Whoa, this is, this is, this is my thing here, man. I can spend like a day in this sub. <laughs> Seriously, I could. I'm going to stop it for a second. I'm going to try to make it brighter. All right, I just stopped it for a bit. I tried to brighten it up because it's getting dark. So here it is, sonar. We got some controls. And if we go here, this is cool. We got this. Eyes. Yeah, you can actually look in. Really? Yeah, it's just an example though. Ah, uh, okay, a battleship is there. Yeah. You can see a battleship. So they would go to the surface and look through here. Uh huh. That's really cool, actually. Yep. So we go like that. Okay. And we got this guy here. He's looking at this actual graph right here. So that would be your plan of attack or submersion. Plotting table. Okay. That's it. Right there. And that's the acoustic group. Interesting. Okay, keep going. Wait, did I miss anything? Sonar emissions. Oh, a typewriter! This looks like a typewriter to me. Definitely. Maybe that's how they send messages? Maybe, maybe. To the surface? Uh, maybe, maybe. Or I think they're... It's possible, you know? Because they said there was a computer, right? This is a radio area, another one. Yeah, sonar emissions. And that is a, I don't know. Over here is a gain of something. I found moldy food. Yeah. Oh, the captain gets special treatment. And why is the captain's space so big? Oh, look at this. He even has, he even has his own mirror. What in the world? And only like even a coffee table. The man has his own bed. Look at the captain here. This is the captain right there. And storage space. This is the captain right here. Chilling. He's chilling. Here. He's chilling. This is where they sleep here. Oh, this is where they chill. Here. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Let's see what it is. Oh, right there. You see right here. Hey, there's a dog. Oh, this is way bed. more better to sleep here. Wow, he has a lot of room. This is like an RV. Yeah. I can totally do this. <laughs> he even has cupboards. Officer cabin. No, this is this is officer's cabin. This is the. This is wardrobe. No. That's the commanding officer. Cabin. Whoa. He gets this. He's a lucky boy right here. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. A mirror, a cupboard, a light. Yeah, that's cool. Storage. Daddy. It looks like it goes a bit deep. Food. It deeps in there, goes deep in there too. Okay. This okay. Boardroom. Board room. Cool. Got, a, got some hangers. This is the Argonaut in the ocean. Cool. There's still a little shoe to shower. I'm gonna go here. Okay. This is the, oh. There's beds in here. Wow. How many men are supposed to be in here? Well, everyone has to man the station, right? We should look at look at that number. Okay. More places to go. Look. There's a room here. So this is the kitchen. Kitchen with a sink to wash. Is there a microwave or something? Look, they put the dishes over there. Is there a microwave? No. Oh, no. dishes go up there, but I guess they don't use clay plates like these ones. I'm sure they use metal. This is probably inaccurate. They wouldn't use those plates. At least I wouldn't. Was there even metal back then? Of course. The whole ship's made of metal. It's moldy food. This is the Merlin Gurlin. <laughs> Merlin Gurin. With a big giant 
valve or some sort. Oh, look up, look up, look up. What? Battery cells. What? What? This is a battery cell. Look over there. Battery cell loading hatch. Oh, it's the end of it? Yep. Okay. This is another washing dish area. Oh, another dish area. So there's a couple of these things. Daddy, look what I can do to this thing. Daddy, look what I can do. You climb up? Okay, Ella's going to demonstrate going up. This is how they climb up. Way! Cool. Big tiger now. Way! I'm just holding it on. Way! Way! There's a rope. Way! Way! That's the torpedo loading hatch. All right, and over there is the kitchen, like we said. Secondary kitchen. It don't look like kitchen. Where's the shower? That's what I would say. And look, <laughs> this is the fridge, right here. This is the fridge. It probably is not insulated or something like that. This is fresh food. Yeah. So no, but it's moldy now. And here, you got a torpedo loading station right there. Well, that is not a live torpedo, hopefully. Why is that but there is a torpedo. It's just fake. Just you load them in and you shoot. So this one's got one, two, three, four loading stations. So I guess the submarines only have four bullets. I can't see you having more than four bullets. Where are you going to put them all? And then this guy here sleeps one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people can sleep here. Wow, torpedo. And the top is interesting, there's like valves. Lots of valves. A lot of valves. A lot of weird, uh, a lot of conduits on top. There's a switch of some sort right there. And right there. But yeah, this is where how they load torpedoes and shoot it out. Hopefully you guys get a good view of this because this is some history right here. Okay. Ah, but si tu vois, il y avait des armes là. Yeah. And we uh, got a fire alarm. I don't know if that's added or not. There's a fire extinguisher. And that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, look, this is the pressure valve. So we're going to go outside now. This absorbs pressure, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's stop it right here and turn it off. Okay. So we got some sort of outside hull looking in. So there's, there's air there, pressure hull right there. So that, that's what they mean by releasing pressure, I guess. This is what they mean by releasing pressure. All right, so now we're back outside. Let's go down and see the rest of this exhibition. But before I show you, this is the submarine from the other side. <sighs> Guys, that was cool. Okay. Here we go. So this is the ballast tanks. The ballast tanks are wrapped around the pressure hull of the submarine. They act as reservoirs that are open at the bottom of the passing underneath the Argonaut. You can see these openings on each side, running the length of the submarine. So these, so that sea water can be quickly filled or emptied. Ah, cool. To be able to maneuver underwater, a submarine must weigh exactly the same as the volume of the water it displaces. This is Archimedes principle, but it must also be able to maneuver at the surface. For this, it needs to achieve buoyancy. This is the role of the ballast tanks. When they are filled with water, the submarine dives. To resurface, they are emptied using pressured, pressurized air. Oh, that's so cool. It is. An that's, alert why, that's why there was like all that pressure. Yeah, there's there. pressure everywhere. I was like, what is this for? And look there, there's something. Oh, I read the wrong order, but yeah, okay. As you pass under the Argonaut, or Argonaut in English, you can see the space between the pressure hull and the ballast tanks wrapped around it. The bottom of the tank is entirely open and communicates with the sea. Oh look, yeah, see this holes. Oh yeah, there's holes. And that's where it gets released? I don't know. Interesting. So here we go. Oh, there's one more, okay. Here we go. I'll read it all. Because my fans want to see it. To dive 
At the surface, the ballast tanks are full of air. To dive, the vent valve on top is open to let out the air, and the tanks fill with water. When the submarine dives, the ballast tanks are full of water. To surface, the air below system is opened, letting in compressed air, which drives out the water. Buoyancy increases and the submarine rises to the surface. Cool. See, look, this, this is talking about these pictures right up here. Mm. So, this is the purge pressure. Purge means release, get rid of. You have ballast, ballast tanks filled with air, which fills the side hull. Well, see, and that's when they surface. Yeah, that's when they surface. And then this one is when... And this is the opposite. So, pressurized air supply is here. Ballast tanks filled with water is here. No, not there. Here. Oh, here. I'm pointing the wrong places. Yeah. And over here is like a, I guess, a, like a blowhole, like a, a whale. Air blow system. Because look at this one. This is when it's when it's closed. Yeah. Right? And then air fills. And this is when it's open and then water fills. Ah, that's cool. Pressurized air supply. See? You know, I knew none of this before this trip. <laughs> So now I know about submarines. Oh look, it says no ballast tanks, no submarine. No ballast tanks, no submarine. So without the air held in the ballast tanks, you cannot raise a submarine, which makes sense because you must decrease the pressure to bring the submarine upwards by filling with air. Okay, Ella, you're gonna get squished? We, Ella, you're gonna squish? This is why we go to the science center so then we learn about things. Yeah. And we're learning a lot about submarines. Mommy, I'm not squished it out. I'm like hanging out and I'm like, <laughs> And that's the end of the submarine tour. No, it's not. No? There's okay. Part. There's more. Water plate. Exploring. Now, I just want to show you the model of these submarines. It's pretty cool. These are different submarine type models. Pretty interesting. So that was a decently big one, I guess. You got these ball type styles. We got these smaller ones. We got uh, these tiny, tiny ball ones. That one. And these giant ships to give you a relative scale of how big the submarine is. And here is another one showing you different sizes of submarines. So these ones are gigantic. Because if I step back and you see that ship there and that sub there, that sub is really big. Ah, more reading. All right. So I'm just gonna take a pan through this because I don't have time to read it all.